Welcome everybody to our Saturday webinar. Uh, today our channeler would be Karen. So thank you Karen for doing this. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, we really appreciate it. Um, you doing uh, the channeling and helping us along. Um, I would like to say a few things first. Um, first, uh, for Karen, um, we won't be asking uh, Gert Bernier questions, but everything else pretty much uh, mm -hmm. she can answer. So just leave, you know, Gert Bernier questions for when to Kirk comes. It's much easier. Um, <laughs> <laughs> if we do it that way. And now I want to say hello to all the people in the room. Um, <clears throat> so we have Katie, Jerem, Johannes, Michelle, Noha, Sarah, Sheer, and Valerie. So welcome everyone. And as always, I would like to say please if you find the information helpful, if you enjoy what we do, if you benefit from it in some way, um, please consider donating to the website. You know, it always helps. Whatever you can donate, it's perfectly the perfect amount. So don't feel that it has to be a large amount in order to count. So on that note, I would like to now um, give the microphone to Karen. Okay, just to let you know, hi everybody, and thank you for showing up today. Saturday morning for some, 4 o'clock in the afternoon for other people, depending on if you're in Europe or not. Um, the way I channel is I go into a semi-trance, um, but I can come back in as Karen at any moment and then switch back in. But just going into the trance, I do through some toning. And then once I'm in, um, Theos is the guides that I channel. They'll come through. You can ask them anything. Uh, they particularly like questions about, you know, life and, uh, you know, uh, how to become, how to forward your life in a spiritual way. That's their particular liking. But you can ask them basically anything. But give them, you know, they like the hard questions too. I like them because I never know what they're going to say. So I learn every time you ask a question. So should I tone? Do you do you want to hear me tone, or do you want me to mute and then come back when Theo comes through? I would say tone. I okay. We, we can all what benefit. I, okay. What I do is I do a series of ohms uh, in a specific tone of the oming, and they have explained to me that's sort of their phone number, and it gets me in that vibration of where they are. And you'll just see. Um, I'll I I will sort of change a little bit. You'll just see me you'll see a, a joy come over me when they come through and and that'll uh, that then you'll know they're here but they'll usually announce that they're here I'm just turning off my phone sorry about that. All right. yes that would be good <laughs> <laughs> hello this is Theos can I help you <laughs> that's a new way of channeling <laughs> yeah, I channel I channel everything okay all right just give me one moment One moment. No, doggy, get down. Sorry about this. Okay. Tom. <laughs> get down. My animals start to usually get get excited when I start doing this, so that's why. Tom, get down. I don't know why. Thomas, really, go down. Okay. All right. Here we go. <laughs> they do. They get excited. The energy changes, and they like it. Like that's why the cat is like right here. <clears throat> Oh 
Hello, we are Theos. Welcome to Theos. And we are so pleased to be with you today. We send each and every one of you the most pure greetings and our eternal love. We will tell you something about ourselves if you would like to know as this is our first meeting with you. Yes, please. We would enjoy that. We have been with Karen since she was a little child. We reached to her because of her wanting to know who she was, as we are part of her Oversoul, the larger part of her. We are not specifically her, but we are part of her Oversoul in the way that she is part of our Oversoul. We are at a higher vibration and we became aware of the different aspects of ourselves and when we saw this human being trying to tune in to all that is we knew that we would help her to better understand herself and therefore we could see the world through her eyes and give her guidance and knowing and help her to find the truth about herself. And it is our great pleasure to reach out to all of you to also help remind you about who you are. We stand not literally but figuratively over all of creation and we marvel and we direct our attention into what we find interesting in the moment and we take what we want from that moment, the experience, and move on to the next one. And right now, in this now, Karen has our attention as do all of you. So we are pleased to offer any answers to any questions that you may have and we will give them to you from our perspective of what we see, of what we know and what we would have you also to know. Again, we want you to know 
how much each and every one of you are so very loved. There is nothing more and there is nothing greater than you can ever know about who you are and why you are here. But we want to share that with you first before we continue. If you have any questions, we are happy now to answer them. Noha. Greetings, dear Theos. Greetings. Uh, uh, first of all, I would like to, yeah, much love to you. I would like to greet you for your spirit. I love it. Um, my question is, uh, is there any guidance for me to accelerate my channeling process? Could you guide me on that, please? To which accelerate your... Channeling process. Channeling? Yes. yes One moment. <laughs> And if there's any uh, spirits around with me, who are they to help me in that? So I can call for them. All right. Thank you. When you channel, it is only a method of standing aside and being empty in a way. And we will explain. A telephone has no care for the information that comes through. And any time you are blocked as a channel, it is because there is still a part of you that is trying to filter the information. The release of needing to understand or control anything that comes through you is the key to being open and what we mean by that is it is a matter of trusting the process for you specifically we would recommend that you start first with writing and don't rush to channel through your body because therein is the resistance the idea that something will be coming through you and you don't know what it is. Karen knew us since she was a little girl. It was 30 years before we ever spoke through her. We spoke to her always and we continue to do so. It is very important when you are channeling to build the relationship with the being or the energy that is coming through you and sometimes it's more of an ego want of an accomplishment to do something than an actual need to do so so first remove your desire to channel and become a pure vessel an empty vessel through which the information can come without any care for the information. Do not have an opinion about what is said. Do not have an opinion about how it's done. But just let it flow in. You will find your connection in meditation. You should try, perhaps, toning or oming or you can, as we said, begin first with writing. But you need to understand the difference between information coming through your mind and information coming through spirit. We suggest writing because the information will come down through your mind and into your hand, and you will be able to write it quite quickly and quite unconsciously without again judging the information. How often are you meditating? On daily basis actually. And I for how long? Ah, uh, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, but how much it takes it. I go for long, I like it, I enjoy it. In it's the uh, moments where you are in the very stillness of the meditation, that is when you would ask for the information to come through you. 
depending on how long it takes you to get into that centered spot. That is when you will ask for the information. The information may only be a word. It may only be a communication of, hello, how are you? Or, we love you. Or something very simple. But there will come a time with the practice that it starts to flow more fully. Mm -hmm. Many times when you channel, you don't realize how much the information is only for you. So you may be hearing guidance that you think, oh, that's just me. But right. that, in fact, can be the channeling. So start to trust the information you have. But again, don't be attached to the outcome because that is the ego part of you wanting something. It's not wrong to want it. But the question is, why do you want to channel? Why? What? Because I'm interested. I uh, love it. I think it's uh, you're getting your own knowledge. You're getting your own info. Whatever you need it, it's there. Exactly. That is it precisely why you channel. Some people right. want to channel because they want to have the experience, which is also not wrong. But the idea of knowing why you want it, you can specifically ask for that information. We highly recommend you build a relationship with the beings that you will channel first, as opposed to sitting down and just asking information to come through. For just then you general, are having a conversation. General questions to anybody or a specific being is there? Like Everyone Orion? has their guides. Everyone the guide. has. Start with your guides. If other beings are able to come through, that will come later. But start with the larger part of you, because that is the most accessible thing. Are you aware of your own guides? I know of three. I know of three, and they're Pleiadians. Do you yes. personally have a relationship with your own guides? No, not really. Uh... That is the first step that you need, because anyone can tell you who your guides are, but until you know them... Right. I'm, I'm open to that. I'm asking them all the time. This is my greetings when I go into, cha into meditation. I greet my higher self and I greet my guides. And I know their names also. So I, I greet them by their names. But still no contact happens. You must wait until that happens. It is a switch. And again, don't be in a hurry. Because oh. the higher self can speak to you in many different ways. Start right. to be expectant of a message. It may be a butterfly. It may be a feather falling from the sky. It may be just the perfect intuition. I see feathers in that all moment. the time. Yeah. Feathers are a way that the spirit world connects with us all the time. Sometimes it's just in making us aware. Yes. But don't rush. Don't rush the the process because it will come when you are ready. It's on time. It's true. Actually, when we do guided meditations, I really get it. I get it really. Uh, at that time, I know the inner knowing at that moment for any question. When it's guided meditation, it becomes enfolded, you know, tenfold or so, or hundredfold. I get it stronger. But when I'm doing it alone, I'm more quiet, you know. It's not as strong as it is, you know. So this is my, the point I'm asking about. It becomes stronger when it's guided so many people about well, then we, pref we prefer for you to continue to access it in guided meditation until such a time where it starts to spill over into the unguided meditation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, at that time I know it because I get internal, internal knowing. I know it. You know, the answer is there, you know. So I love that. It's beautiful. Well, and... Uh, there's no any other entities you want to tell me to, just the guys to consult them and the higher self only. No any other beings. Like I know one, I'm, I'm consulting Orion all the time because I'm reading through a channel book and he says, I'm there, just ask for me. So I'm asking for him all the time. You can ask for whomever you want. 
But what we encourage you is to build your relationship with the guide that you know, your higher self first. If you're running from person to person, being to being, you're not building the relationship. This is a long-term soul connection that we're asking you to access. And again, do not be driven for the result, but be driven for the relationship. You are going to be able to access the divine part of you. There's nothing more special than that. Right. Well, appreciate you. Understand. Do you course. understand? Okay. Of course, hundred percent. Thank you, thank you. Well, appreciate. You're welcome. It's others. Thank you. You're welcome. Greetings. Greetings. How are you? It's Shiv. Say that again, please. How are you? This is Shiv. We are. Is how we are. We mm -hmm. are. We exist and we are. But we are fine. Thank you. What can um, we do for you? Well, today I'm supposed to go holographically to the colonies for the first time. I want to know if my guides has any messages for me, any advice, if they have anything to say about it. Whereas we do not have any direct play with the colonies, we would only say to you that you should enjoy the experience and be open to whatever you, you experience in that moment. There's nothing more special than making another connection for the larger part of you, for the soul part of you. We only want you to enjoy what you experience there and be open and ask specifically for memories so that when you come back, you don't have to ask someone else what it was you did there. We think that before you go, you should go into deep meditation. So at the moment when you're taken, you're already prepared. And we say that to all of you, that before you sleep is a perfect moment to set your intention for anything you wish to experience, whether in dream time or in your travel time but you can set your intention then. And it's also a great way to center yourself so that the body is rested while you are gone, that any healing or recovery that needs to take place is accelerated and accentuated, and also so that you, again, can have full consciousness when you return. We only will say to you, have fun and enjoy the experience. We are, in fact, light beings, and this will be for you an experience of being that. Beautiful. It's a different way of perceiving the world and it, in creation. We see Karen touch things, and she feels them with her hands. We don't touch things. We insert our consciousness into things and we become that within the moment. And the same thing as a holographic being. Your interaction with things, with environment, will be so much more different than it is now. And that will be a new experience for you, we know. <laughs> Thank you very, very much. You're welcome. Hello, Theus. This is Sabrina. Hi, Sabrina. I think um, it's funny the way you say your name, Sabrina. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, my question is more about uh, structures of creation. And um, 
I had read and channeled, um, I don't know if you know about the Council of Creators. We know there are many councils and hierarchies of beings in different positions throughout creation and in the universe. And of course, we do know of the Council of Creators. It is very much a structured creation that we all exist within, with each being and each energy on a hierarchical structure having its place and having its, for lack of a better word, job to do. Okay. So, yes. So do they, where, where in the hierarchy of things do they fall in, in terms of having all there is as being first? Where, where or when do they come in? In creation as which you speak about, you're talking mostly about material creation, the creation of worlds, the creation of dimensions, but there is also creation that does not include those things. Dimensionally, those are very tangible things for the human mind to understand. They also are very material in essence. But there are parts of creation that begin with the nothingness, where there is nothing. That is where you would say God is. And that is where everything is in an unmanifested form. It's not been thought yet, but it is only the potential. If you follow sacred geometry, you can also understand this concept. The next form of creation is in fact the separated mind of God in which the first thought, the Big Bang, all of that is incarnated there. And then as things filter down, you have to understand that you go from everything into specific manifestation. So if you ask us where the Council of Creation is, it would be below God and above the angels, but in that realm of existence and within this council, each member, each energy has its own specific job, its specific realm over which they are presiding. Not specifically realms as in the fairy realm. That is much lower and that is really in material creation. But you are talking about creation of everything. So within the Council of Creators, you have all of specific creation that comes through. With, underneath them, you have specific energies that are related to the specific sectors, is a better word, that they govern upon. So they are not quite at the level of all that is, but they are the instruments that all that is uses to administrate creation. We will tell you, though, that the area between creation and non-creation is bigger than all of creation. It is the storehouse of all the potentiality of everything. It is every thought that will be thought. It is every action that will be done. It will be every thought that is yet unthought. It is everything. And from there, all of creation draws. 
would that be what we consider the void or what some some term the void though not void of anything in some ways yes but there are actually two voids when we spoke first of the nothingness that is one void but then there is the mind of God that has separated itself out if you understand that God is everything and nothing that is is not God that is one way of looking at it but if you look at it as if all of God being everything all allness was condensed into one thing but this one thing was infinite it is impossible for us to explain the vastness of nothing and everything at the same time but picture it as the hands of Karen now in one ball of being that ball of being had no awareness other than it was but it could see nothing from any perspective because it was everything so in order to experience itself it had to separate itself out in order to get a good view but still the view was so vast it was like being in a white room looking at a white wall with white air and there may have been chairs in that room but because everything was pure white you can never differentiate anything as it was so from this spot now turning it this way here is the all of everything here is the point that has been separated in order to have a perspective of the all but again the perspective is too vast so from this mind projectiles start to come out and you further separate the mind of God so that that perspective can see that perspective and that perspective can have a view of that perspective and each time there's a separation falls down within the realm of possibility and the void is all of the spaces between the being and the manifest and the being and then the manifest the void is all around us and that is what encompasses all of creation the larger part of all is accessible but so very vast you can never reach the end of it you can never know all of it because it's everything that is and everything that isn't all at the same time so yes some things come out of the void but the void is vast it's bigger than anything else and it's not so completely lined up in perfect measurement because we would say it's more all-encompassing it's more dimensionally encompassing than it's possible for the human mind to visualize but just think that everything that is around you in your energy field is again part of the void if you close your eyes you are in some way standing in it and from your mind you create and you're pulling the energy from out of the void we are all in a way standing inside the mind of God we are in the void of the divine and we are created with those thoughts that are initially thought 
and the thoughts have thoughts. And through there comes the structure, the perfect structure. Does this answer your question? Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, is there duality in all universes? No. Okay. And it is not necessary in all universes. In the material universes, it is quite often employed because of perspective. But sometimes things just are the way they are. There's a difference between duality being positive and negative in creation. Some things are just pure, pure bliss, and some things are just pure, pure pain. For example, only because they exist within the realm of possibility. But all things you can think do have the potential and do quite possibly exist. It is our finite mind, the mind of the human, the mind of the created being that needs the duality for the perspective. But when you are all that is, you have the infinite perspective and it is just another piece of the creation. Duality serves you now, but at some point you will not need it or you may choose it because you like it. You have all of that possibility. It's difficult, we know, because you are thinking about what you know, but just realize there's a whole lot that you will find out. Not here, though. And you won't experience non-duality here, because that's not the nature of this incarnation. Yes. Does that answer your question? Yes, I, I thought so. I thought that there wasn't. And actually, I can imagine non-duality. Um, I know I won't experience it here, um, but it's not. You know, it's almost like eating an ice cream, and it being the perfect ice cream. But in a moment, it will be gone. We say that because there's the pleasure in the moment and the moment is gone. There are many realities that exist for just a brief moment because they are the whim of the divine. They are the what-if scenarios that exist. You eat something, it's pleasurable, then it's gone. That's sort of the way realities work. Right now, as a creative being, your whim is to be here, and then it will be gone. It's that fast. It's that quick. So enjoy the ice cream. Thank you. Mm. Um, and my last question was, um, I know that humanity is different, um, that we have all these different DNAs and different civilizations came here. So on the bigger perspective, what was the reason why humanity was created the way it was? Humanity in and of itself is only a manifestation of other creation. And what we mean is there are beings that want to have single focus within the realm of the divine you have the ability to focus on everything all at once but within an incarnate incarnated life you have 
the pleasure of single focus. But yet, creation being what it is, it likes to have the full spectrum of possibility. And so creation made infinite choices available for incarnation. And again, as we said, the thoughts think. The created thinks. They are also creators. And it is a step-by-step -step process of basically tinkering with the original design, the improvement, the building up, the breaking down, the adding this, the taking away of that. It's all play. The purpose of all things is the experience of all things. And just like any car that you have on your road, it is much different than it was 100 years ago. It is faster, it is sleeker, it has mechanics that were not possible before the new minds thought of them. And that is the way creation is. As the experience grows, as the knowledge of what came before grows, there's the continual desire to tinker, to make it better. You also have your car specialists who like to tear everything down to the basic frame and build something that doesn't resemble a car at all. It's the same thing from the larger perspective. Acceleration of expansion of a being is just as exciting as the most primal part of it. But as the minds think and as the minds develop, there will always be a new add-on. There will always be a new version. And the purpose of it all is only the experience. We do understand that not having this knowledge completely leads the world into very interesting experience with each other in the choices that are made. But again, that is still only experience. We do understand that humanity struggles with how it treats itself and that is not necessarily what is desired. But from the larger perspective, it is only just another experience. We encourage you to continue to tinker with humanity, to tinker with creation. We know it's inevitable, though, because the mind wants the expansion into the next thing. We don't know that we answered your question directly, but that's truly the way things are. Everything is a building block onto the next thing and the next thing until you decide that it's big enough and then you want to tear it down and start all over again because it's fun and because it's the play. It's the purpose of creation. Thank you. Thank you for your answer. Um, Aidy, which she's she's here, but I think she doesn't have a microphone, and she wanted to know um, her progress with the ascension. If you have any comments on that, we don't know you, so we can't answer for you about you. But we will say that there is no ending point. It is all a process. And the fact that you are busy with your ascension means that you're busy in learning and you're busy 
in trying to find the truth, we would encourage you to not measure your ascension. The more you don't know, we believe, is really the more you do know. So specifically, what is your question about your ascension? Because there is no medal and you don't win an award when you get there. There is no there. So specifically, if you would ask a question, we would be happy to answer you. We do think, though, the answer is don't measure it. We will give you a 79 if you want a number, but we don't think that you do. 79 out of 100. It's a little bit of a joke. Does she have a specific question? She's She has not responded. Um, so I, I will wait until she responds. I, I will let somebody else uh, speak at the moment. We will say to everyone, though, with the idea of ascension, there becomes a moment when you are awake. And we would say that each and every one of you are. The idea of the ascension is integrating all of the knowledge that you begin to have. So the question really is, how much do you know who you are? How much do you really know that? Because until you know that, it doesn't matter if you're on your path for one year or for a hundred years. The true ascension comes, the ascension of all is the knowledge that you are one with everyone. It's not a question for you anymore. It's not a feeling. It is who you are. You cannot separate where you begin and another begins because the connection is so apparent to you. So for everyone, until you are there, until you are in that point, you are still ascending. It's not to be measured in the way of judgment but in the way of knowing. Because once you know that you are one, you will never ask this question again. There will be no question. It will be who you are. We think that answers you better and we hope that you understand, but you won't get it until you get it. <laughs> Thank you. Um, mm -hmm. Johannes? Um. Yeah, I have one question, or maybe two. I'll go with the first one. Uh, mm -hmm. About me and Karen. Uh, what past lives we had together, or I was, I know that we had a past life, but if you can. Karen is laughing on that, or that she has never spoken to you about this, but she also has the feeling of the connection. We will say to you that the connection that she has to you is not within the physical plane. It is not an incarnated lifetime as you would see it, but more of an energy connection of knowing, of being in the same place and having the same, coming from the same realm almost like old friends. Mm. 
this knowing that you have with her is the instant familiarity that you see when you realize you come from the same soul family but not necessarily you are not each other's soul but you are from the same soul family the grouping of beings that agree sometimes figuratively to hold hands and to jump into this world together and you come from that same energy place and that is why you have the familiarity and the instant knowing in relationship to each other you may have had incarnations in this world that were similar or at similar times but the deeper connection comes from the soul family connection and we will say to you that you may incarnate here together but you also may incarnate in other worlds together because you both like to hang out that is your fun and your joy in rediscovering each other in yet another world you are safe with her and that is the appeal that is the draw and her to you Does that answer your question? Yeah, it does. It really does. <laughs> like, really does. <laughs> Thank you for you that. You really wanted to answer your question. <laughs> That's nice. Um, second question would be if there's any messages that wants to get through at this time to me. Karen made us a joke to Sabrina earlier about what we say when we're asked that question. But we will give you a real message. You have the idea that you have to achieve things in a certain amount of time. And we will tell you why. Because there were other lifetimes in which you literally ran out of time. But you are here for the long haul. So give yourself a break in the veracity with which you pursue things. And stop a little bit more and rest a little bit more and enjoy a little bit more you will still accomplish everything that you want but stop running so very fast there's nothing chasing you and you're not running out of time you have all the time and in this lifetime you have more of a command of it than you've ever had before. So use your command of time to create. And don't watch the clock so much. Time moves, but you can command your experience in time. You are so very loving Johannes, and you are so aware of the expression that you can bring to the world. Take the time to do that, to reach out, to love, to be love, to show love. That is your gift, that is your mission. 
and that takes time. We feel your heart so full, almost bursting, and it's beautiful because it's a light that if looked upon directly can change anyone who sees it. So slow down so you can be seen and give that to all that you meet and all that you encounter and to your partner and to your family and to yourself. You are love and we are so pleased to share this message with you. We hope that answers your question. Thank you so much. It's like it's almost like I've been waiting for it. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, I think Martina has a question here. I will just quickly give the phone to her. Mm. Hello. I'm I'm sorry for jumping in like this, but I just want to know if there is one moment, please. Yeah, one moment. Sorry. Okay. Oh. Ah. Okay. That this is Karen. I had to come back for a second because so much of the time when they talk, I always have tears running down my face and I, I could feel my eyes starting to burn. So, one moment. Yeah. One second. I have to uh, I have to breathe <laughs> for a moment. Take a break. So good. Thank you. Okay. All right. All right. We are back. What is your question and what is your name? Uh, my name is Martina. Hello. Much love. Hello. Much love to you. And I just want to know if there is some some message for me now. And I think I think that's all that I will know what what it means. <laughs> what is your specific question about the message you want to hear? I mean, I'm going through something now and. I maybe I just need to hear that everything is gonna be okay or it's okay mm -hmm. if my life is going in the right direction if it's going to the light uh, yeah the reason we ask you what it is you need to hear yeah. because we encourage you to say those things to yourself yeah. You need to ask your own questions and then turn them into ask, af affirmations about what you want to create. This is the specific moment where intention is what you seek. Mm -hmm. You should not ask another being if your life will be okay because from our perspective it's already okay. The question for you needs to be how do I create a life that is okay? And we will say to you, you will take your question and turn them into affirmations of intent because that is the creation aspect of you creating the world that you want. If your life is not okay, then we say to you, now is the time 
to change it. So instead of saying, will my life be okay? You will say, my life is more than okay. My life is my creation and I intend to have the best experiences. I intend that what I need will appear right in the moment that I need it. And once you intend it, then it's about trusting that that is true. We said earlier, the best possible moment before you set your intention is right at the time of meditation and sleep. And start saying these things to yourself until you believe them. Because when you believe it, when you know it, then it is true. And then you will shift in your experience to a place where that is true because your mind so completely knows it you know it through your whole being that it has no choice but to show itself to you in the way that you know it to be so again what is your question about being okay I mean, maybe, maybe there is not a question there anymore. <laughs> okay, what is your intention then? We like that you learn so very quickly. <laughs> what is I, your intention then about your life? Um, I'm going to encourage you to start with words of power. The words of power are I am because it's only you. You can only speak about you in relationship to your experience. So I am okay. I am taken care of. I am fed. I am wealthy. I am, I am, I am. So word your intention beginning with I am. Um. I will start with I am okay. And okay. Then Believe really. that. Know that. Okay. First, that might be hard in the beginning. We don't deny that the shift of wondering and hoping can be big to knowing okay for right now is good enough. And when you know that, then you will be confident enough to know more and to know more and to intend more. But we encourage all of you, every one of you beings out there, to not ask other people about your life. Intend your life. Intend your wanting and create it. Because we can tell you anything, but until you know it, it won't be. And the jump between knowing and being is very small. That is the point of creation. And that is what all great creators do. They intend and they manifest. And sometimes just okay is okay someone's knocking they're also welcome does that answer your question yes yes thank you thank you very much I'm, I'm sorry for it's, it's here from from us so I will turn the microphone thank you very much you're welcome. Michelle? Hi, Theos. This is Michelle. Hi, Michelle. Um, I have several questions. I'll try and make it into one sentence. <laughs> we'll see how I do. So, 
I've been trying to connect with myself and I I would like maybe a more effective way. Um, I have actually had my higher self channel to me like on the fly one day and my higher self did not want me to know his name. Um, and I've been told of two other parts of that. So I'd like to know um, a way in which I can become more familiar because I feel um, I need the guidance. And in saying that, it, it's like I really need the guidance. Like the, Everybody says, follow your higher bliss your highest bliss. I'm like, I have so many blisses, but I, I can't choose a bliss. Or, or nothing seems more important than the other. Or I feel frozen, so I become... I, I become frozen. And well, While you're frozen, stand still for one moment and we will try to answer your question. First, We'll do the second part first, because we've been speaking about this recently, and we feel very confident that this is a very fast and quick answer to give you a little bit of relief. Following your bliss does never have to be one thing. It can be your bliss in the moment, it can be a long-term version of your bliss, or it can just be leaning down and picking up a flower and reveling in the wonder of what that is. Your world equates everything with accomplishment, but that creates standards that are impossible to achieve. Your bliss is your happiness and your joy. So we would say to you, of course you have many blisses. There are so many things around you to enjoy. That being said, there is everything to enjoy. And your truest bliss, the highest bliss, as you had said, is being able to find the bliss in every moment. It doesn't mean that every moment that you are walking in the world is the happiest moment. But the bliss comes from the appreciation of the experience and that comes back to knowing why you are here and not in the case of why am I here because I'm here to be a baker or why am I here because I'm here to work in this way but the why of you are here is to experience the being here being here or being where you are is the gift that you have given to yourself this incarnation so that you have the chance to have all of these little blisses around you at all times. You forget as humans that everything is for your own benefit, for your own experience, so we would say to you, especially to you, Michelle, drop a lot of the jargon and don't analyze it all too much. Do what feels fun for you in the moment. But realize that you can find the fun in any moment, in anything, if you really understand that it's all just play. It's all playing. So we would say to you, we heard ourselves speaking 
So that is one thing, and I know that it's hard for you to understand. We know, but we will try again to explain it if you didn't get it. But we would say, don't worry about finding the ultimate bliss. What we want for you is that you understand it all can be bliss. And that's the appreciation of every moment, that the smallest moment is as great as the greatest moment, because you're appreciating it. And it also gives you so much joy in just being. We would like all of you to take a moment and realize where you are right now. For the majority of you, you're sitting down in some sort of chair. You have a body that is supporting you, that is holding you. You have ears that are giving you the ability to hear. That is a marvel within itself. Can you marvel at your own creation of this body? of the chair, of the hearing, of the breathing. Those are the moments that we miss because we think that that is not as great as something we may do. But we will say to you, those are as great, and that is where creation marvels in every breath, in every movement, in every sound, in every thought. You can spend many lifetimes just marveling over walking across the room. And you may think that's not big enough, but believe us, it is the biggest thing. It is the most fantastic thing. And anything else is just a combination of movement and thought and beingness. We would challenge you to take your awareness away from accomplishment as a measure of happiness because happiness comes in the appreciation of the moment and not the other way around and that is why it's so impossible to find true bliss because the appreciation is lacking. Start appreciating the smallest thing, the smallest wonder, and you will find yourself in bliss, and you won't need the big things. You will find them, but they won't be any different or any more blissful than the smallest thing. They say, be in the moment. That is what being in the moment is. I find much more bliss in a rock than I do in, say, having a life path. <laughs> so that it's very confusing to me. <laughs> like, how do you be alive in the world? Confusion comes in the measurement of one thing against the other. We're telling you there is no difference. If you find more appreciation in a rock, that is perfect. Look only at rocks. There is no one that is telling you to do anything else except for you. You are the only one measuring your bliss or ranking the bliss. But a rock is just as wondrous as anything else. A rock holds the knowledge of the time of creation. It is the culmination of the energy. It is a wondrous, wondrous thing. There's nothing more amazing than a rock. So look at rocks and stop asking the questions, but spend your time appreciating your experiences and you will find much more bliss when you truly know We will wait for 
for one moment. Do you understand what we're saying to you, Michelle? Uh, sort of. <laughs> I understand that. I, I guess the answer that I heard was quit trying to focus on accomplishment. And that is exactly kind of where I get stuck. Which and direction? We say, if it's not working for you, don't do it. Okay. And look at rocks, because rocks are amazing. Yeah, they are. <laughs> we want you to understand and appreciate that there's the part of you that knows that. And there's the part of you that understands how amazing a rock is in what would seem simplicity, but a rock is not simple at all. It is a combination of crystal and structure that has been brought together in such intricate fashion that if you could focus your mind on the complexities as if you were looking at them through a microscope, you would realize that there are multiple worlds just within the rock. That is a truth that gets discarded, but it's no less of a truth than anything else. But that rock to you, that would be the message of the rock. And focus on that and find your bliss in that and let the rest of it go. Because if the understanding of a rock is all you accomplish in this lifetime, you have learned more than many people. And that is a joyful thing in the knowing the rock. It might sound trite, but it's not, we assure you. So keep playing with the rocks. Ask the rocks to teach you their secret. They can tell you about all of creation because they were there and they have the knowledge of those things. And maybe the big world for you is too big. Maybe you need to narrow your focus into the smaller parts of creation. Because for you, you have the ability to connect to those worlds. Stop trying to find your bliss in the parts that confuse you and look at the things that you can know. And once you know those things, you won't need to know all the other things. It's a lot more simple than you want to make it. And maybe you like confusion, but we hear you saying you don't. So look at the rocks. Play with the rocks, talk to the rocks, feel them, experience them, know them, and you will know a lot of things. I do. For your question about connecting to your higher self, that is your challenge to find the name of your higher self. It's not for someone else to tell you, it's for you to find. We would suggest to you that if your higher self does not give you a name, then you should name it and identify it until such a time where a different name comes through. It doesn't really matter the name. What is important is the relationship you have and the listening to but that is something you need to find within yourself because the person you're asking is not always going to be there to give you that information. And yeah. we have very strongly right now, before you talk, we have very strongly the information that things that you suddenly know that you didn't know two seconds ago, that is your higher self telling you what you are having the problem in doing is separating the information from Michelle and the higher self. 
that is not so important because you are only one being. It's nice that you are getting information and not being able to tell the difference if it's coming from the higher part of you or you. Because again, it's one being. But just be easy about it and trust your inner knowing. Name it if you want, if that helps you. But we don't know that the name is the most important part. And we can guarantee you your higher self is not holding back from you at all. I don't feel that. like, yeah. I don't feel like the name is important. I feel like being able to discern the connection, like the okay. wisdom, the wisdom that, that I am listening to my highest self for my highest good. That, that is what is important to me. It's not names. Intend to have this ability to discern Intend it. Start not demanding, but commanding it. Start speaking that you know the difference so that you believe that you do. You don't believe that you do. And again, it's about setting the intention for what you want until you know it. Because once you know it, it will be true. Anything that we want that we don't believe that we have is never true until we know it, and then it is true. That is the process of your lesson at this time, to learn it. You think that once you tap into that information, you will be able to make a lot of new decisions. That is true. But we say to you that the lesson for you now is learning how to find that knowing and to understand it, but by believing that you have the ability and the right to know it. For some reason, you are not even sure if you are allowed to know. But we will tell you, you most certainly are. And you do know at times, but then you question. And that's quite normal in the beginning. But the process for you now is the learning how to believe that you know. And that will apply in many things. The process is believing, learning to believe, and then knowing. And then once you know, it will no longer be a question. Many people think that tapping into their higher self is a secret. The higher self is always there giving you information. It doesn't need to be separated as a different personality unless you want it to be. Because ultimately, it is you. It is only you. It's always you. So again, intend that you know. Start to believe that you know by using the I am as a statement of fact, undeniable truth. And say it to yourself enough that you believe it, that you know it, and then it will be true. It's a little bit of a mind game, but that's the way it works. Like... As in, I am connected to my higher self? Yes. Okay. I am. Yes. And we would encourage you, because you started off with the name, to name it and start talking to it. 
If it refuses to give you a name, then give it a nickname. Maybe one it doesn't like, so that it speaks up and protests. <laughs> it's very cute. Play with yourself in a nice way and expect nice results. Okay. Be light, be loving to you. Thank you, Karen. Or Theos. <laughs> Sorry. We are all the same and we are here. Mm. Thank you. Karen says thank you. See, I'm back. <laughs> mm. Much love. Much love. Okay. <clears throat> Do you need a break, Karen? No. Okay. Okay. So I have a question from Holster, and he's asking if there's any new energies reaching Earth soon, um, and if there are, um, if you could talk about any way that uh, some people can alleviate the symptoms that they may feel from the ascension and the shift. We will tell you that mankind likes evidence of things. So mankind constantly finds evidence of things in their ascension. They manifest in ways of pain or headache or nausea or sickness or disorientation or energy fluctuations within the body not because it has to be but for some reason humanity likes it because they can point to it and say see my energy is changing see there are shifts going on so we would say to you intend your manifestations of the energy to be different than sickness or headache or any of those things. Ask for overabundance of joy and laughter and love. And those can also be evidences of the energy fluctuations. It's only an aside, but is something that is within your possibility. People want proof. They want to suffer through their ascension, which makes very little sense in the fact that extension of it is expansion into love and into joy, but it is quite amusing to us that you get there through headaches and nausea and sickness and pain. At the same time, new energies are coming into the earth because the focus of humanity is so very strong on shifting now. The conscious awareness that shifting is possible for humanity as well as the natural progression of humanity as it passed the tipping point into a more positive leaning world. It's like pouring liquid from one cup into the other as the more positive world in which you are moving into becomes the cup of that becomes more full the flow will become even faster what we say about new energies is it's not now where there's a new energy coming on a specific date and then within a few years there'll be another specific date but now the energy flow is continual and it will continue to come in at a faster rate than it was before. So expect continual flows of new energies coming in because it's not stopping anymore. It will continue until humanity is fully shifted. That is the way it works. In the beginning, it's like a drop. Picture a pipe 
bursting. Well, the pipe has bursted. The pipe has burst. And now the new energy is on a continual flow coming in. So intend that the manifestations of the changes are different. And that is for you to select. Any time you are asked to intend something new, it is to be a lesson to you to teach you about the creator that you are. Because if you knew it, this would not be the question. You would just simply say, I am not enjoying the process of ascension. I'm going to create a new way for my body, for my physicality, for my mind, for my emotions to react. And you would intend it, and it would be because you would then know it, and it would have to be. Does that answer the question? Yes, very, very clearly. Um, the next question came from Laini, and she was asking about if you could give any information about the crystal skulls, mm. and are there any around Stonehenge, or will they find any more? We are tuning in to Max. We are watching. Liney, if you want the answer to this question, and we will give it to you, but we want to also let you know the process of which we are accessing the information so that you can do it too. The crystal skull that is most apparent in this world now is the one that is called Max. If you, and we are sure you are aware of him, if you will picture that skull and meld, if you can, with that mind that is that skull, you will see within your mind's eye or within your being projections of light going out across the world in a grid-like pattern that are connecting that skull with all the other crystal skulls. We will say that the crystal skull connection between the different skulls has not been broken. It is not accessible by all of the humans because the skulls are not in their specific places that they need to be but the skulls are all and have continued to do their work throughout all of time because their connection passes through earth and buildings and plants and they do not need to be next to each other to connect to this grid of consciousness because consciousness is beyond the physical plane. Humans want that so that they can see it, so that they can work for it so they can understand it and experience it, they think. But truly, if you want to have the connections to the crystal skulls, you only need to connect to them on the astral plane, which is where all of the energy work is done. So the question is, will more crystal skulls be found? There will be several that are uncovered, one of them will be in the Egyptian world, and there seems to be a crystal skull underneath the Sphinx. There also seems to be a crystal skull within the Peruvian jungles and in the pyramids there. Those skulls will be the next to rise but you can see in a grid where all the crystal skulls are if you're looking into the mind of the existing one, Max, because the grid of light coming from his mind shows you precisely where they are. 
Some skulls, however, we will say to you, do not exist in the physical plane. So the only way to find them will be to find them in the astral. And that is where your shamans and people like that come in, people who can tune in to that plane and see the crystal skulls there. That is where the majority of the work needs to be done. So the question really should not be who finds the next skulls on this plane, but how do you go into the astral to meet them all? And that is our answer. Thank you. Carolina? Hello, Chris. Hello. Um, Hello, I have two questions, uh, but it's Karen okay to proceed? Karen's always okay to proceed. Okay, that, that's fine. She will tell you. <laughs> okay, good. Um, my first question is, um, as we ascend more as a collective, as, are we going to be able to stabilize the axis of the Earth permanently? Are we, will someone repeat the question, are we going to be able to stabilize the axis of the Earth permanently? The axis of the Earth is fine as it is. The Earth has its own needs and wants and progression and to insist on a stabilization by your definition is asking the earth to not continue on its own journey. You should have no fear about the access that it's going to flip violently and all of the world will be destroyed. That is not going to happen, at least in your lifetime but if it does happen, it is because it's what Gaia needs and a destroyed earth is an unfortunate thing in the minds of the beings walking around on it at this moment. But we guarantee you that is not the plan. That is not what will happen. But there will come a time where Gaia will flip her access or axis, and it will be at a time when it feels right for her because it's part of her expansion. But all the beings will not be here at that point, or they will be in a situation where they can leave. But don't fear the stability of the axis of the earth. That is not within your control and it has very little to do with the expansion, ascension of humanity, but more the expansion and the ascension of Gaia. Okay, I see. Um, I, I thought it was because of our uh, negativity as a collective. The world is moving into a more positive place, but it's humanity that is ascending. It is humanity that is ascending. Gaia is perfect. Gaia is at such a high vibrational level that she needn't be concerned with humanity's ascension. She wants you to ascend because it is the natural progression. But a lot of the things that you hear about the earth suffering is not true. Gaia is joyous and Gaia knows exactly what she's doing. She will continue to grow and expand. She wants you to ascend and that is why she gives you the place to do it. But the earth is only a co-creator with you for the world that you want. But truly, she could throw you off at any time if she found you to be 
something she didn't want. You have less influence over her than she has over you. And she has let humanity be as it is without too much interference, but only really nurturing and giving. There's only a few times where she has shaken things up, so to speak, in order to help shift consciousness. But you are much more dependent on her than she will ever be on you. She could throw you off, literally. <laughs> Thank you. That's, that's different than what you know, but you know it to be true. Mm. That makes me feel much better. <laughs> Thanks. Um, Think about it, really. You are an ant, if not yeah. smaller than that, in the belly of the divine. You are barely noticeable, but extremely important to her. She loves you, she nurtures you, she gives you her ability to breathe, she gives you a place to walk, she lets the sun shine on you, she does everything she can to be a great platform for your ascension, but her ascension will happen regardless of yours. But she's waiting for us. She's waiting for the humans because that was her agreement. But again, your and humanity's negativity or positivity has really little influence on her. She's too big to be influenced. And she, again, we feel very strongly to say it, can throw you off at any time. So be thankful that she hasn't done so, but she has no intention of doing it either. She's a great mother and loves her children regardless. Thank you. And I love her too. Well, she loves you too, so don't worry. But choosing to be kind to Gaia yeah. is honoring the gift that she gives you. That is a beautiful thing and shows your awareness. And that's a beautiful aspect of you. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, I have a, another question, um, but it's more um, like a personal one. Um, I'm looking for my soulmate. Um, I was wondering if you could help me somehow find him. I also want to connect better with my girls in Era and Syria. These are your hybrid children? Yes. You're asking? Yes. Two girls. And why is your soulmate missing? Is he also not in this world? We don't feel him in this world. Ah, okay. Maybe that's this. why I haven't found him yet. For your hybrid children, again, the connection needs to be made by you. And it is a part of the believing and part of the intention that we would emphasize to you. And again, being able to separate experience from knowing. It's much like mediumship would be that is the tool you will use to connect to them. So the intention has to be to connect to them. We would say to you that they will communicate to you more in imagery than in words. It will be easier for them to show you how they are 
in what they are doing, in what they are thinking, and to send you the feelings and the warmth of love and communication, much more in a telepathic communication than actual words, because the distance is so great. But you can tune into them by sending them also information, saying, this is your, your mother, and I'm happy today, or I'm doing this today, and expect to get the imagery back. That's really the message of how you will communicate to them, not with words, but with images. And that's part of the telepathic communication that you will have. We don't know if on, because this is really out of our realm, but Karen is saying to us right now that on the colonies telepathic communication is taught. And that is something that if you are not involved in that program, you need to get involved in that program in order to facilitate your own communication with your hybrid children. But we would say to you also, one way to notice it is if you are in a situation and all of a sudden you get an image of something that you know does not necessarily come from you. You have all of a sudden a feeling of joy, of a child laughing or playing. That would be a message coming through. And we will say to you, those messages are already coming to you, but you're not understanding that they're messages, and that is the difference. So be expectant of messages, and be expectant of the communication, and you will start to notice it. We would also encourage you to write it down. And then you can also in your wanting of communicating, set aside time to share your telepathic communications, just as I am being channeled through Karen, you can sit down and have a moment, 10 minutes of sending back and forth imagery and feeling to your children, but also with the expectation that you are going to get that information in return. So set a time every day or every few days to sit down and send them love. And then wait, and you will find it comes back to you. Send them laughter and imagery, and you will find it comes back to you. And as you begin to trust it, the flow will be much greater. That is our recommendation, and that is what we know about the communication. But it is telepathic communication, and not by words. And you will begin to know them because you will start to recognize them and the feeling they give you, and the knowing they give you, and the knowledge, and the feeling of love. You will begin to recognize them, recognize their personalities. Thank you. I will definitely practice my telepathy. And uh, if uh, anybody in Gertrude is listening, uh, I'm willing to learn. <laughs> um, and so if my soulmate is not here on Earth, um, can he be able to come to contact me? Again, it would be through the telepathy. But we will say to you, your soulmate is not necessarily your life partner. And there's a difference between okay. a connection. What we're hearing is that you want a romantic love that doesn't necessarily have to be your soulmate or your twin soul or your twin flame. It's nice when that happens, but it's not necessarily the partner that you will have in this incarnation. Your soulmate is truly, can be anyone, and you can have many, many soulmates. 
because they are around you and you have a commonality. But what we hear from you is not really looking for a soulmate, but looking for a love partner. Is that correct for you? Hello? Carolina? I believe we lost her for now. <laughs> okay. Um, we will move on to the next person, Valerie. Are you sure? Did you want to just let um, Chris go? You can go, and then we'll, we'll let Christine go. Okay. Hi, Theo. It's nice to meet you. You are Theos. Theo is another being, and we know okay. him. Okay. Theos. Theo, Theo nice was to meet you. a very nice being, but we are Theos. Yes. Thank you. Nice to meet okay. you. Yes. Nice to meet you, too. So um, I've been listening to a lot of different channels, and um, several of them say the same thing, and I just kind of wanted your opinion on it. But uh, what I hear is our government should be changing to a Nasara, Jasara type government with uh, prosperity funds for us to help others with, um, bringing in the golden age. Can you speak to us of this? Well, the word you used was should. And we would say it from the perspective of when you are working from the idea of the good of all, the good of mankind, the most productive type of society, it takes all of those things into accord. It's not so much what should be which it's important and we understand why there have been specifics laid out of how it should look. We will take our perspective, which is our way of interpreting things, and say that what should be is what should be. That is very true. But the question is, how do you get there to the point where everyone is in that type of agreement and in that natural flow of allowing everyone to prosper and ensuring that it's a possibility. We know you are thinking everyone can't prosper and that is also coming down to the choice of beings and people, but there is a much more positive society that can be that isn't now. The question really is, from our perspective, how do you get there? And that will come as people continue to become awake. It will not come as a result of war. It will not come as a result of assertion of power. What will come is when the majority of humanity commands it into being. There's a difference between demanding, which is sort of what war does, demanding that a group do something or stop doing something or give something, but commanding of society saying, this is the world that we believe, that we know is the best for us. So as a society, as humanity, our job now is to intend that enough people come into their own truth and will accept nothing less. Yes, can you speak to us of, of, of our voting system and how we can make sure that it is not rigged, as they say? Again, when People do not allow it to be that way. There is, we will say, a complicity within people to expect another to do a job for them. 
and there needs to be a majority of people who stand up and command that things are different. If it is your joy to follow and to insert yourself within the voting system of government, then we encourage you to do so. It's not enough to sit and wonder when things will change, but enough people have to put themselves in the situation to implement the change. And that will come when enough people are awake and enough people are asking for the change. Thank it's you. a very fine line, but we, we want to emphasize action is also important. It's a very important part of change. It doesn't mean tearing down a system, but it means commanding a system to be in place that does have a positive outcome, that does make sure that things are not taken in a direction in which they were not intended. It's only about waking people up and mobilizing the ones that are awake. It's a strange phenomena that people wake up and then do nothing. We would say they're not quite awake then because the complicity in action nullifies the idea that they are awake. They may be in the stage of becoming aware, but when you're truly awake, action will follow. Indeed. Namaste. Thank you. Namaste. Christine. Greetings and blessings. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes. I'd like to know, um, I like to do crystal, um, crystal diagrams or um, for Reiki crystal diagrams for healing different types of energy like um, the ocean energy, um, animal and abusers and abused people and so on and so forth. Do these really work? I mean, I feel they are, but I hear different things from people saying that they don't really work. Okay. We would ask you to mute your mic, if you can, and we will answer your question. Say that again. To mute your mic. Do what to the mic? To mute it so she can they can answer oh, for you. I'm sorry. Hold on. How do I mute the mic? Oh, I see. Sorry. Just click on the microphone icon. There you go. Okay. She hit the she hit the wrong button, but you can answer it. Okay. Everything works is our answer. And if you are the facilitator of the energy, it's more important that you believe that it works. If you are following your own inspiration and intuition about setting out crystals in a grid-like structure and having them work together and then in setting an intention for change. It isn't so much that they are necessary, but they do facilitate the energy, especially when you believe that they do. Other people not believing or saying that they don't work is only words. You should follow what you feel inspired to do because your talent to use these tools is what gives you the inspiration to use them. So we would say that you should trust your own intuition to use them because 
those tools have called to you to be used by you and what other people are thinking about it should have no bearing on your own knowing it's the same as Michelle being called into the beauty of a rock crystals are conductors you do not have to have a scientific degree to know or understand it but they are indeed energy conductors the person Linny asking about the crystal skulls and their different placement throughout the world these are conductors of great energy and you should know and you probably do that the crystals that you are using can connect to the crystals throughout the entire world and they are throughout the entire world every grain of sand is a crystalline structure and the representatives that you work with will reach out to their counterparts throughout the world and conduct the energy what's more important than the crystals themselves is the intention that you set forth and we honor you for wanting to heal for having that love intention there is no greater intention than to give back to the world to heal the parts of the world that could use a little bit more love such as the oceans where the fish are suffering we said Gaia is fine and indeed she is but it doesn't mean that the things held within her cannot be more bountiful and more energetically charged what's more important is that you know the intention of what you're setting forth and we ask you don't listen to the people who don't believe you or don't believe it because it wouldn't matter if it was a crystal or a laser beam or a fairy dust they still would not believe and you should follow your intention and again we honor you for wanting to heal and for seeing the need for healing so yes it does work but it works in a manner that you may not have thought of before but everything is truly connected and you could use a pencil also to connect to all the wood of the world because the vibration of a pencil shares the vibration of the trees you are using representation of something that is so evident throughout the entire planet the very crystalline structure and as humans become more crystalline not only are you healing the waters and the land and the earth but you're also giving that extra energy to the humans that also need it the very humans that are telling you that it doesn't work I say it's your job to help heal them and their understanding as well not by telling them but by setting your intention and letting it happen so thank you for doing your work and please continue to do it thank you for that answer Thea she unfortunately she dropped but I'm sure she'll be she can hear it later um, I just wanted to check how, to see how how tired uh, Karen is if she's willing to take one more question or we are fine there's no problem okay so Wendy yes hello Karen hello Theos it's blessings and greetings and thank you so much for being here today and bringing this wonderful information sometimes I think that humans are looking for the profound when the simple is the profound so thank you so much for sharing these ideas that the simple connection of a pencil to all of the wood and all of the trees of the planet is indeed a, a small but powerful permission slip I in the idea of your talking about conductors of energy us we human beings are such great conductors of energy and I'd love to add that right now it is 11 11 my time mm -hmm. thank you angels for being here with us today 
Um, and, and with that said, today, um, on November 21st, uh, today is a day in which there is a, a global meditation happening across the world. Um, and it's basically the idea is to have everybody con connecting all over the globe um, all day in, a, in what they're calling the, the victory of light which is really just a powerful intention of the, of the masses to invoke the presence and intervention of positive extraterrestrial life, um, economics, um, the way we want to see the world, visualizing um, uh, the collective expansion of the of the Earth energy, um, and and as far and also as far as full disclosure um, of the extraterrestrial presence and space programs and um, so I was just wanted to perhaps if you could comment on the idea of this the power of the energetic collective consciousness in, in a meditation of this form it's very powerful and it you should look at it as and we know we're saying this to you because you've had this exact visualization. It's like a wave of energy rising up from the intention of the beings doing the meditation, like a like lifting of a plate off of off of the world. What you're literally doing and the way that we want you to visualize it is as the energy raises it lifts yet one more restriction for knowledge for 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 what is the word we're looking for for knowledge for well-being for permission for all of these things to now be freer to flow in. It's as if humanity has been pressed down by restriction and as the meditation rises in one intention, one powerful intention, it lifts yet another veil off of the world. So we spoke earlier about enough people having the same intention and having the same knowing. And this is yet another step in that. We do encourage you to understand that as much as this will be a step forward, it needs to continue. But once you all have joined in this congruent meditation and this intention takes form it will continue to rise and it will be very easy to keep that connection this is truly a manifestation of awareness of oneness and the power of the thought thinking the new creation We encourage you to do it now and again to do it later and to do it until things really change. But it is a process and part of the process is not the result that you are seeking but learning how to create in this way. It is a self-perpetuating learning it creates like a feedback loop. Once you start to see a little result, you will feel more confident in setting even a greater intention and a greater intention, knowing that it does start the ball rolling into the change. So as much as the result is sought, we will tell you that the biggest part is the learning that this is the way that creation is done. 
and what's interesting and what you may not have ever thought about and what we would like to share with you is the cumulative result of so many minds joining together shows you going back to Sabrina's earlier question about the hierarchy of creation the bigger the mind energy that is tapped into the bigger the thought that can be thought and the bigger the change will be that comes collectively you are accessing almost not directly and not actually but as much as you can fathom almost infinite power one mind can think and intend but hundreds of minds thinking and intending together will create phenomenal change and as this change comes not only is the result important but the realization of how connected we are and how connected we need to be in order to create the change it will bring, bring humanity closer together in realizing that your brothers and your sisters all are important in bringing the change and you will begin to appreciate the collective result and the collective power and the collective knowing that is coming from this so the lessons for this have many many applications and many many aspects but it's a beautiful beautiful intention and we continue to ask you to keep doing it and we thank you for embarking on this great lesson for yourselves because it's only through the intention and collective wanting of humanity that any change will happen again like we said earlier complacency without action yields no results at all so thank you for your intention and for your participation in being who you really are thank you for your beautiful answer it's a beautiful question the answer can be no less thank you Theus for being with us today um, we will now close and I want to say that um, your answers were uh, we definitely need to listen to them again <laughs> they were beautiful and in depth and very loving and very carefully thought out which we really appreciate that um, everybody enjoys your energy. Carolina wanted to thank you and sorry for her computer. Her um, computer is forgiven. <laughs> um, I don't. I don't know if you would like to close with perhaps a blessing. We will be happy to close with a blessing. And we don't know who is in the room now if it's the same. Can you please say the names of the people in the room currently? Okay, Barbara, Johannes, Michelle, Sarah, Valerie, Wendy, and me, Sabrina. The blessing is of course for everyone, but specifically for the people in the room. That we wish you the deepest knowing of the love of who you are. For one moment, we ask you to close your eyes, if you will, and stand knowingly that you are in the infinite mind of the divine, that you are the creation of that thought, that wanting to know 
the experiences that only you can have through your thinking, through your knowing, through your being. And in that way, you are perfect without being anything different than you are right now. You are exactly what we have in mind. You are love and you are perfect. You are all the potential that you want to be and every experience that you have is relished as yet another part of playing, another part of being that could never be if it wasn't for you exactly as you are. So appreciate first the fact that you are everything that was ever wanted by the divine because we appreciate you in that way and we know you in that way and when you look at another human being or you look at another thing realize that that was also the perfect thought of the divine and appreciate that being for what it is because it is also love and for the beings that don't know this special secret we encourage you to share with them their perfection and love them but first love yourselves we love you and we ask you to know that you are what you think about so we ask you to think love to be love and to be one we love you and namaste namaste we love you also namaste, namaste. Namaste. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Wow, Karen, that was really good. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> we had a lot. We had some serious rain going on. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and and some walking around, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think with that with that blessing, we don't we don't need any more blessings. Um, okay. I want to say thank you to everyone who participated today. Thank you for all those viewers. At some point, we had like twenty six viewers. So, thank you for watching um, the webinar. And uh, I hope everyone got something out of this. I think there were some really good questions today. Uh, even though they seem personal, they apply to most of us. So, and certainly the answers did. Um, so thank you for that, everyone. Um, God bless to all, and we will see you in our next webinar. Thank you. Say goodbye, everyone. Bye. 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 Namaste. Namaste. Bye. Love you all. Bye. Bye.